Hello there, this is DBT, and these are the rooms. And all right, let's um, talk about Asphalt 8. We're gonna play a little bit, but there's gonna be a lot of talking in this video, so just be ready for it. And this is because I wanna discuss what's happening with the 4GT, but not only about this car, but what it means for the game and what I consider this important for people to understand what's happening with the game and what to expect in the future. The 4GT is the best ca catalyst to, to, to bring this conversation in. So, the very first thing, it's, I'll try to give you a little bit of context of what, what, what was the 4GT and what it is now. The 4GT used to be the king of class A. Um, it was the car with the highest rank at 1800 and it performed really, 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 really good in multiplayer. So that's why it was straight up considered the king of class A. Over here I have a, a little bit of a, of a table that I've shown before, even though I, I changed it a little bit, um, to show you what are the, the ranks of the classes in the game. Class D goes from under anything under this all the way to this. Class E from here to this, Class B from here to here, Class A from here to here, and Class S from this to that. So, the 4GT fell right there at the 1800 mark, being the king of Class A. So it would be matched against cars with a lower, somewhat lower rank and somewhat higher rank. Still, the car performed really, really, really damn good. That's basically uh, how it had been for a while, and it's a relatively old car. Uh, it's the legacy tab that still had the Pro uh, Max Pro upgrades. You can see mine is already Max Pro. So that's how the 4GT used to be, right? However, in February, Gameloft announced that they were going to change how multiplayer works, and they announced very clearly that cars were going to be matched in particular brackets of ranks. That's what I call them, the brackets. So over here, I made it. Uh, this is how they posted it. I made this spreadsheet to be much more clear or much more visual as to how these brackets work and that, that's actually this one yeah there you go <laughs> um so this is the exact same information they provided but only in a more visual manner for example they said that anything from 1503 to 1592 so this would be that 1503 to 1592 i'll explain later why i have the plus minus two over here um so any car that falls anywhere in between this would be matched at a, at a minimum with cars of these ranks and at a maximum with cars of this rank. So that meant that, for example, the previous king of class C, the Volkswagen IDR with a rank of 1554, um, suddenly it no longer uh, was just a straight up unbeatable car because then suddenly this car would also be matched against cars up to 1590 rank. So that's a considerably higher rank, but it would also be matched against cars with a lower rank. Same thing happened with the Ariel Atom, where at a rank of 15, uh, 1353, was sort of in the middle low section of this bracket that starts at 1323 and ends at 1412. So then this car was matched against considerably stronger cars. And I bring all of this because of the case of the 4GT. Once Gameloft introduced this new multiplayer system at a rank of 1800, it fell into this bracket that started at 1773 and ends at 1862. And, you know, this is basically the king of class A versus the king of class S, which is a straight up class ahead. Granted, the difference is still, it's very considerable. It's not as big as, you know, uh, the difference from class C to class B, but the difference is there and it's very considerable. So this car was being matched against way stronger cars and the matches were very unfair in that sense because it was an absolute underdog of a car in this bracket. That's just how it was. Don't mind me while I take a sip of water. There's a lot of talking over here. So the car was performing absolutely terrible and I don't know if it's because uh, people complain a lot about it or if this is something that Gameloft already had planned. They rebalanced the 4GT so that it no longer is in this rank. Instead, they made it to be here. So the 4GT is at a rank of 7070 as seen in the game now after the rebalance. And what that creates is the situation where the car is now being matched against cars of the same rank, ever so slightly higher of plus two points, all the way down to 1683. So the car no longer is being matched against their equal and higher, it's being matched against their equal and lower. 
That's why I consider this not to be a nerf. I guess it's a nerf in the most straight sense of the word that, you know, it has a lower rank and a slightly lower stats, but I consider it more a rebalance because it made the car suddenly to be much more competitive in their new bracket. It no longer falls in the highest bracket, it falls in the second highest, in which it is, you know, at the ceiling of this bracket. So I put this plus minus two because this rank actually uh, can be anything from 7070 to minus two, aka 1778, uh, I mean 7068, or plus two, which would make it 7072. That's how this works. So that's why in all of this, I put it like that. Same thing if you notice the class says uh, you have the main, the baseline is 1860. Slightly worse cars are this, slightly better are this. And I do mean slightly. The changes are very, 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 very small, but they are there. This will come, uh, this will become important at a later point in the video. So that is why Gameloft did this rebalance. And I understand that a lot of people are upset about this because it makes it so that this car it's no longer the wow absolute best car in class a and oh my god i have one of the kings but to me personally and i think that's what game of was aiming for is that the car not to have the car not to have a value of oh it's just the highest uh, rank instead it's an actually useful car so i understand that some people that use that car for gauntlet at the rank of 1800 will be affected because suddenly their their gauntlet rank got decreased by 30 points but I believe that that's a little bit of an outlier situation because the main objective for Game Love is multiplayer. While there's other game modes in the game, their main, main, main thing is multiplayer. So that's what they're basing everything around. And that makes sense because that's what gets more people coming back to the game. So, um, just to recap, the car used to be the king of class A. It used to perform okay in the previous multiplayer. But when, like, let me hide this. Uh, it used to perform well because it was matched against a little higher and a little lower. Then they introduce the new multiplayer and then the car falls at the bottom of this bracket and it performs bad and people get upset. So then what Gameloft does is they put the car in here and it performs good, but people are, up, are still upset because now the car got nerfed. So it's a lose-lose situation. And a valid question that people have been asking is why don't Gameloft just put the car back at 1800 and get rid of this multiplayer, get back to how it used to be and everybody will be happy. Yeah, you can, you can wonder that, but I'm here to tell you why Gameloft is not doing this. And before I go into it, I want to give a little bit of a disclaimer here. I do not work for Gameloft. I am not affiliated to Gameloft in any way and I do not speak for Gameloft. All of this is a speculation, I just want you to understand this, but I'm extremely confident that all this speculation is correct, and I have some things to, to, to prove that, or to base it off. With the disclaimer out of the way, let's talk as to why Gameloft will not return the old multiplayer. That is just because Gameloft is in the business of making money, and in order to make money, they have to make things obsolete. To Gameloft, new players are more valuable than old players. And why is this? I'll give you an example. Back in the day, uh, there were only two currencies, credits and tokens. Credits you would use to buy cars and upgrade cars. Tokens you would use just for buying offers, buying a few cars that were exclusive to tokens and things like that. But for the most part, you were just fine with credits because this is what you need to buy a bunch of cars and to upgrade them. So people have been playing this game, like the veterans have been playing it for many, many, many years. This is just how it has been. And People that have been playing it for a long time were able to ma amass a lot of credits. I have 32 million, but this is not a lot. It's a good amount, but it's not a lot. There's people that have 100, 150, 200 million credits amassed because dur during all those years, they were able to play for so long using the double credit boosters and whatever, and they got a lot of credits. Now, Gameloft, once they started getting a bit more greedy, I don't know if it's when, they when Vivendi acquired them or whatever it was, um, they decided, you know what? These players don't really have a reason to invest money in the game because they already have a ton of their currency. What do we do to make those players more invested and maybe want to spend money in the game? Oh, 
we're going to introduce a new currency, and that's when uh, fusion coins were introduced. And then cars you can only upgrade with fusion coins. So that means they introduced this new fancy car, like the 4 GT. And oh my god, I want that car. Okay, I get the car, I can upgrade it a little bit with credits, but guess what? To upgrade the rest, I need this currency, and I don't have any currency. It doesn't matter if I've been playing the game for five years, I don't have any of this because it was just introduced. What do I have to do? I have to grind in the game. And like I said, that's exactly what Game Loft wants player to do. Either grind in the game and get desperate and buy uh, with actual money or just straight up buy it from the get-go. And be like, oh my god, are you telling me that I need, I don't know, uh, a million of this to upgrade this car? I don't know how long that's going to take. Okay, you know what? Let me go to the store and let me buy a bunch of them. That's what Gameloft is trying to do. That's why I'm saying that old players aren't as important as new players are. Because a new player comes into the game as is right now. And they already understand, oh, there's this currency and there's this currency. And I'm going to need these. So I'm going to start grinding it. So they don't know how the game was before. They don't know that it was easier. They just come at this point where things are hard and to them is normal. So Gameloft has more than enough to be like, hey, you can still speed it up. Just spend a bunch of money and you can get it. Or you can grind it. Don't worry. It's free to play after all. But here it is if you want to spend some money. So, like I was saying, old players to Gameloft aren't that important. Gameloft is okay with making players and all that they had before that was good to be obsolete because they want either for them to spend money or simply to, to be like, okay, you don't want to spend money, that's fine. But guess what? All that you had that was really good, it no longer is. So either you live with the idea that what you had is no longer good or focus on getting new stuff but for that you need to grind or spend money that's how gameloft views it and it makes sense gameloft like i said is here to make money that's their objective they're, they're, they're not here to be our friends so that's my argument as to why gameloft is doing this type of thing and i i brought this up because of the whole multiplayer thing that why don't gameloft just return to the previous multiplayer system and make the car to the previous rank and remove all of those rebalances that they've been doing and all of that well this ties to my next point which is that gameloft will not i mean they don't and they will not revert things that either they have spent money on making or that are designed to make them more money and this is the case of multiplayer if you notice all of the festival cars that have been added for the past year or so. Let me find some of them for you. Um, around here. You can tell by these ranks, by the way. A festival car only says Pro. Old cars will say Max Pro. So. Festival cars. I'll, for the past year or maybe a little longer. All of the festival cars that they've been adding. Always fall at the top of these brackets that I mentioned. All of them. If you notice the Lotus Evaya, it's at the top of this bracket. Um, Chevrolet Corvette ZR1, another festival car at the top of the bracket. The Veyron, actually, oh no, this is the, the also the festival Veyron at the top of the bracket. La Ferrari Aperta, another festival at the top of the bracket. You get my idea. If we go to um, this area, we're in the same situation. Uh, at the top of the 1682 bracket, it's a festival car. Festival car at the top of the bracket. This is not a festival car, this is one of the few anomalies. I'll get to talk about that in a little bit. But same thing, it falls at the top of the bracket. Um, festival car, top of the bracket. Festival car at the top of the bracket. Same thing if we go to, what's another bracket? Um, the 1590. Actually, that one is not super populated yet, but I guarantee you it will be. 1590, here they are. So, 92, Ferrari FXX. Again, 92, because it's plus two over here. Top of the brackets. This is no longer in that bracket, so that doesn't matter. Uh, we have the Rimac Concept one, It was that one was already there. Aston Martin V12 Speedster, uh, uh, festival car at the bracket. Um, another car that is at the bracket, even though it's an old one another uh, festival car at the bracket so you see each one of those cars uh for the past year or so they've been falling at the top of the brackets and that is no 
coincidence. This means that Gameloft, for the past year or even longer, they have been planning to introduce this multiplayer system. They just didn't do it sooner because they needed a whole bunch of cars to be in each one of these brackets. So that by the time people started playing it, there were already enough players doing it and it would feel a bit more fair. They have been also rebalancing cars like the Veneno, which used to be somewhere around here, and they rebalance it to be here. Uh, the Pagani Zonda R used to be somewhere around here and they rebalance it to be here. The Kodra Tronca was also here, they rebalance it to be here. And you know, there's other cases of cars that they have uh, nerfed to fall in here or to fall in here or fall in here, whatever. You get the idea. They have been either adding new cars that fall at the top of the brackets or rebalancing other cars to still fall at the top of the brackets, which is exactly what they did with the 4GT. It was in an awkward spot, well, they put it at the top of the bracket. So this is something that they have been planning for a very long time, and I guarantee you 100% that they're not gonna change this. Here's what pe got people hoping that it was gonna be the cars, the, the, the situation. It says, racers, we're currently testing the classic season matchmaking in the World Series, in the current season, blah, 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 blah. People took this, they believed that this, this meant that Game Love was like, hey, so we're testing this whole new system to see if people like it or not. If not, we may return to the old system and go back to this. That's what people believe Game Love meant, but I'm 100% sure that's not what they meant to say. What they mean is, look, we implemented this system, which is here to stay, and we're testing it just to see what fine tuning needs, like, this card no longer performs great and it's a fan favorite. Okay, let's put it somewhere else so that it performs a little better. That's what I feel that they meant on testing, not that they're gonna remove it. So I think it's important for everybody, all of us to understand this system is here to stay and that's not gonna change. So just brace yourself because this, this is the future for, for the multiplayer. So after all this talking, how about we actually try the, the um, the car in multiplayer, just to, 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 to test it. Now, I'll tell you, I without testing it, I know how it's gonna perform. I know it's gonna perform fine. It's not gonna be an amazing car, it's not gonna give you wins every single time, it's none of that. But the car will perform pretty all right. It will, I would say, if I were to give it percentages, well, not percentages, but just, if I were to, to, to give an approximation, in general, it will perform better than it used to perform in the other bracket where it was a, an underdog of the previous bracket now it's a relatively top dog of this bracket so it will perform fine but like i said game Not has been focusing on putting the cars in in the top of the brackets no they no longer care about filling this whole section they don't care about that anymore all the cars that they're adding always fall at the top of the brackets because that's where the focus is supposed to be. And why is that? I already talked about this in a video, but it's coming up in this video anyway. It ties to the whole thing. There's a lot of old cars in all of this, right? Well, guess what? Game Love want them not to be as good. And that's why they introduced a system where only the new cars will perform much, will perform really good in multiplayer against all the other cars in the previous, um, in the previous ranks. That's what, why they have done this. So, I mean, I, I, I think, and by the way, I hope that this makes sense to you as it makes sense to me in my head. I, I try my best to explain it, but I, I know that I'm very rambly. Don't worry, I'm very aware of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just that whole thing where Gameloft is absolutely focusing on uh, making the old cars not as good and making the new cars the better option and that's why actually this car was not placed you know it was placed at 70 70 right but like i've shown the rank can be 70 71 or 70 72 and that would be marginally better than the current rank of this car why did game love not put it at 70 72 so that it would be at the top of um of that that bracket at the very 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 top well that's easy because Gameloft is putting the the cars at the top of the bracket. There's the ceiling of the bracket, 70-70. But then there is the top of that ceiling, which is 70-72. Gameloft is making cars at 70-71 and 72 to be the festival cars. So that even though this car, the 4GT, is competitive, 
a car that is at 77 in 2 will be ever so slightly better than this so that you go like ooh i want that car because it's gonna perform better so they're still trying to to hook you in with the idea that well this car is good but it could be slightly better there's a slightly better version of this car like the 4 gt mk2 or whatever else that is at a slightly higher rank and look at that pagani zonda r which was an old car rebalance yeah it actually beat a chevrolet corvette that is at the ceiling of this bracket at 772 that's what i'm saying the difference on performance is minimal so that's why i'm not too concerned that this is not 7072 but like i said if you look at it this car it's a festival car that's why it's 72 this car is festival that's why it's a 72 this car is not festival it's old that's why it's 7070 this is old 7070 this is old 7070 so like i said there's a few a few cars that are discrepancies or or you know they're anomalies in that like the acura nsx that one is an old car and yet it does fall at the ceiling of their own bracket which would be uh, i believe this one it's at 1682 so it's at the very very top um because you know this is the normal part of the bracket this is the ceiling of that little of that part you know 1682 so yeah there's some anomalies like that but for the most part you will see that most of the cars that get rebalanced will fall <laughs> of course the game would crash on me why not why not all right, we're back, we're back. Um, what was I saying? Um, about the ranks of the cars in general. So, um, yeah, so that's why the 4GT is over here. The 4GT MK2, which is a festival car, I believe it's 71 or 72. I'm not exactly sure. We can check it out. But yeah, I, I think you get the idea of what I'm saying over here. Yeah, 70, 71, because it's a... Um, a festival car as opposed to the regular 4 gt which is an old car and it's only at 70 70 a difference of one rank but the whole idea is to be like it's it's ever so slightly better but still better so you may want to get that car instead so yeah i think i think i hope that you understand what i'm saying with all of this blah 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 uh because let's do some more races but the the note in which i want to end this video it's a sad note really it's a it's a thing that i believe we all have to understand and just accept that that's how it's going to be game loft will continue to deprecate old stuff to make it obsolete so that new players more like so that old players are forced into the new things and for it to be the normal for new players and another thing that it's uh, ties to this is the fact that nothing in this game, and mark my words, nothing in this game would continue to be the best forever. For example, back in the day, the top of class S used to be... I mean, there has been different ranks, but the one that comes to my mind right away. Uh, it used to be 1820, not 1860. And that used to be the Aston Martin Vulcan. And that was considered the king of the game straight up because it was the highest rank, the best performing car, and all of that. What happened? Well, people were happy about it because, oh my god, I have the absolute best car in the entire game. I'm so happy. But then Game Loft started adding cars that went at a higher rank. And then the best car was no longer the best. Then, uh, to give you a more recent example, what happened when the Jesco was added? Well, it was the 1862 king, ultimate king in the game. The fast, straight up faster, shit, that was my mistake. It was the straight up faster car in the game, and uh, to be fair, it remains to be the faster car in the game. By half a kilometer per hour, but still the fastest car in the game. But I bring it as an example because it's not the best car anymore. It might be the fastest, but it's not the best. Now that gets heavily contested with things like the Bugatti Bolide or the Chiron 300 Plus, which are also 1862 kings of the game, and they have much better acceleration than the Yesco. So the Yesco that was the ultimate pay-to-win car in the entire game, that was the best thing ever, and that was a very loud airplane, um, it's no longer the best. Why am I driving so bad? Holy shit. So yeah, that's another car that is no longer the best. So right now, maybe the let's argue that the Chiron 300 Plus is the best car in the game. Well, guess what? It will not remain like that forever. At some other point, for some other reason, 
with whatever method they want to apply, they will make it so that that card is no longer the best. Why? Because they need to have more carrots on the stick to keep people chasing them. So that's that's what I'm trying to say over here. Nothing will be the best forever. And I mean, if you wanna if you wanna look at it in a real world uh, example, um, the Bugatti Veyron, and I'm talking the real world, uh, the Bugatti Veyron, it got the the top speed record. I don't know how many years ago. And then a new car comes out, and it's faster. And now that gets the 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 record. Maybe the Chiron or whatever. I think the uh, some Koenigs that was also fighting for it. You know, there's always new developments and new things that they want to add. And I bring specifically the example of real world cards because that also reflects as what they're bringing in the game. They, I don't know, if a year, two years from now, there's going to be whatever else. The Bugatti 400 plus. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. But they're gonna that that's gonna be a thing. In Game Loft, if they're still active, the game the game is still alive, they're gonna want to bring that car into the game. But guess what? It it can't perform the same as the rest of the cars because then it's not interesting. They need to bring something that is gonna be better than the previous. So what are they gonna do? They could A create a higher rank than 1860. I honestly don't think they're gonna be doing that in a very long time. Because they need to populate, they would need to populate a new bracket, which would have to be at, what, 1950, so that it continues to be in the increments of 90 rank. Uh, they could do that, or they could nerf the other cars, like they have been doing here, to nerf cars. So, that's uh, that's what I, I, I want people to, to keep in mind. Again, I'm not claiming that I, I know exactly what Gameloft is doing, but you can see, if you, if you look at if you back, back trace the steps that Gameloft have been taking, you can see what's the progression on what they're doing with the cars, what they're doing with the balance. They always want to make it so that everything that was good becomes a little worse so that there's new room for newer stuff that it's better to get more people interested on the new stuff. And that new stuff that will be the best thing in X amount of time, it will be again nerfed somehow so that there's even better stuff and people would go for the new, better stuff. And just to give you a tiny little example that comes to mind, the the Lamborghini, the Centenario. That's an amazing class S car at a rank of 1861. Then they had to, of course, introduce 1682 so that there were better cars than that. But still, the, the Centenario is a really, 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 really good car. I can guarantee you that they're going to nerf it at some point. The same way that people were already afraid that at some point Game Love was going to, well, they were going to nerf the 4GT just like they did. I can guarantee you anything that it's old, uh, anything that is legacy, anything that used to be good and that remains to be good, that is putting a big competition with the newer stuff, eventually Game Love will nerf it so that people again get more. Oh shit, get up, dude! Sorry. Jesus. I was hoping he was gonna get out of the way. You saw I wasn't steering towards him, alright? He just happened to get in front of me. Um, Gameloft, eventually, anything that is competitive with the new things, Gameloft are gonna be nerfing. Oh shit. Just because they want people to focus on the new stuff. So there you have it. I know that this is different. I know that there's been a lot of people covering this topic about the 4GT and saying this is sort of good, this is sort of bad. I know that my video, I really focused on the 4GT not a whole lot, but to me it was more important than, more important than to cover just this car and how it performs now. It was more important for me to try to tell you guys and maybe explain if anybody really cares about this, try to explain what is happening with the game and what will continue to happen from this point, well, really, what has been happening for quite a while, what is happening now, and what will continue to happen in the future. That's just, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Uh, um, a fact. It's a thing that I can guarantee you is gonna happen. And again, I just wanna repeat this whole thing, this disclaimer I gave at the beginning, that I don't work for, for Gameloft at all. I'm not affiliated to them. I'm not a creator. I'm not here to only talk good things about Gameloft. I do not speak for them. And all that I said is a speculation. But at the same time, the fact that I'm not affiliated to them is what allows me to shit talk 
um, what they're doing, you know, and criticize what they're doing without fear of the repercussion of, oh, a creator is only supposed to say good things and not be too negative about things. Honestly, I don't think I'm too negative, but you know, whatever. So let's do one last race for the video. You have seen sort of the performance of the car. It's like I said, what I would expect, honestly, this whole thing that Gameloft is doing of putting cars in the same ranks, rank brackets, makes it so that pretty much all the cars perform the same. So yeah, the performance of this car is what I expected, for it to be okay. For it to be good, not be the best, perform all right, win some races, lose some races, depending on how good or bad you drive, how good or bad the other people drive. And yeah, that's that. So, oh, wow. <laughs> I actually used that Zonda as a ramp and ended up falling off the, the map. Beautiful. Um, dude, dude, Jesus. So yeah, I, I I think that's that's all that I wanted to say about this whole thing. Um, so in, just to summarize, am I happy with the change? I actually am. Because that makes it so that this, I can use this. Ah! What the hell was that spin? Holy shit. Oh, that was BS. The, the spin didn't finish. What the hell? Um, the car performs better. I can use it in multiplayer and not be frustrated because I'm I'm no longer going to be facing class S kings. This is going to perform fine. It's not an amazing car. It's not a terrible car. It performs what you would expect. And I'm happy to be able to use it in multiplayer again. I feel a bit bad for people that relied a lot on this car in Gauntlet. But like I said, Gauntlet, it's a fun mode, but it's not the priority for Gameloft. Every single thing that Gameloft is doing for rebalancing cars and bringing new cars has everything to do with multiplayer because that's what they want to keep people playing most of the time so yeah that's uh, my general thoughts on this situation and that's i think that's it um you know if you like what i do you know what to do you can subscribe to the channel please like the video if you liked it and also visit our uh discord the house of rooms it's a very small discord server uh, that I have for all the racing games that I do, but also for other racing games and also for IRL pictures of cars and talk about whatever. So if you want to drop by, I would love to have some more Asphalt 8 people in there. So yeah, why don't you drop by if you feel like it, if you like Discord. It's a quiet place, but we're looking to grow it up a little bit. Um, again, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you to all the new subscribers on the channel. Welcome. I hope you like all this stuff. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody, and bye-bye.